Back. Joining me in studio now is a spokesperson for the Ndlovu family, Mapaseka Mokwela. Good evening, Mapaseka, and thank you for joining us. Good evening, Now, Andrew. this is truly a sad loss mm. for, for the country uh, as, as a whole, and, and she, we have lost a pillar of our community in Dr. Mm. Ndlovu. Tell us about who she was. You know, she was a pillar, like you say, a pillar for the community, a pillar for the family. She is a trailblazer, a woman who believed in other women, um, who believed in supporting other women, who believed in supporting the underprivileged, who went out and no, no, no mountain was too big for her to, to you know, to sail to over. <laughs> Not even climb, but just yeah. sail over. And, and she did it and made it look so easy. Um, it's only when you look back and you look at all the things that she's done and you realize, wow she's done so much she was a strong believer in education a strong believer in working hard um, and she didn't only say it she practiced it so and she practiced it within the family mm. it's a huge loss for us as a family but she practiced it also just with people outside mm. we have been inundated by amazing messages of condolences from people who have been touched by yes. her life and her space directly yes. who she has gone out to to help you know to say I, I will hold your hand so even in business she would take in other women and say I will hold your hand and walk this journey with you I will make it happen for you I will help you I will open the doors and she did it ever so well now she was also a, a practicing medical practitioner at Orange Farm yeah what about what was her experience like there so so when she started at Orange Farm. In fact, the first time she got there and she was she had just come back from exile um, and she got there and realized there was just this one shack where she was supposed to operate from and it just couldn't be and she thought, okay, we need a proper health care uh, center for the people of Orange Farm. She was passionate about, you know, making things right for the people of South Africa. This is exactly why she went into exile. You know, this is exactly why she joined uh, Umkonto Wesizo. So when she got to Orange Farm and she found this one, um, this one shack and she said, no, this is not going to be it. I'm going to have to start building. She started searching and saying, I need to build somebody, a center of sorts where I'm going to work. And she worked there for five years. But in that five years that she worked there, this is where she established herself, yes, as a medical doctor in the industry, in, 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 the, um, in the area, helping the people in the area, yeah. but also saying, but hold on, we need to build pe uh, houses for our people. Yes. And specifically because she was seeing that a whole lot of people were coming in with sicknesses because of the conditions that they were living, living under. In. So she, she made it her sole mission mm. to help those people. And that's how she got into construction. That's how she started motel construction. Because she was she went in there and she was like, but something needs to happen. She mm. was handed a whole lot of arch lever files mm -hmm. and obviously supposed to, supposed to derail her, yeah. given these files to say, no, nope. yes. read. She went in headfirst, read it all, took it all in, and actually because of that created, came up with something that worked and started from scratch. She yes. knew absolutely nothing about construction. Yes. Worked herself to a point where her company was one of the biggest female-run construction exactly. companies in the country. And then this is her legacy, isn't it? This, yes, this, this exactly. Constru her, her, her foray into the construction world is, mm. is actually her legacy. You know, that is her legacy, but also how she supported other women. Yes. She was a big believer in, in women empowerment yes. and making sure that women are successful. Yes. Um, not only in her immediate space, but women in general. South African women were always, always very um, close to her heart. Mm -hmm. And she would make sure, like I said earlier, she would make sure that those doors are opened. She would make sure that if something needed to be done, mm -hmm. she was that person. So you needed something and you would say to her, this is what I need done, this is mm -hmm. what I need help with. And she will hold your hand, walk you through it, open that door, make sure that you get there. It was her political activism that led to her joining Mkonto with Sizwe. It. And it is this, this seed of, of wanting to take care of the community that mm. actually you know, forced her to go into exile. What was her experience like there? You know, she went into exile and I remember um, hearing the stories from her when she was in Lusaka. Um, she joined the SANTF um, and, and she was an administrator there and she also joined uh, the, the health services there. So she, she did so much. She was an executive there and she made sure, you know, the literary, uh, the literary programs that they had, she made sure that she pushed for those. She worked hard and mm -hmm. she was one of those women who would get into a space, make sure that it has to be done, it has to be done right, and it has to benefit others. Mm. So she never believed in me and me alone. Mm. It was me 
and other and people other with people. me. If I'm alone, then it's boring and talking. Yes. You know, you take other people with you. And she practiced that. And then she also was involved in some intercontinental bodies. Of course. Um, women in a, uh, African Women in Dialogue, for That's example. It. So she supported, she supported a whole lot of different initiatives. That was one that was very close to her heart, uh, yes. Mambegi's, uh, you know, that African Women in Dialogue. But also, on another thing that was very close to her heart is her foundation yes. um, that she was running. So she it was running. about this because she, she, I know she was very passionate about helping orphans. Yes. So she 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 ran the Dr. Lovu Dr. Tandin Lovu um, Foundation, yes. and this foundation focused on children who are orphaned and uh, underprivileged, yes. vulnerable, yes. and she would. So they would go in and not only give money uh, for fees, you know, yeah. the usual bursary would be we pay your fees and that's it. So she would make sure that the fees are paid. She mm -hmm. would make sure that uh, your accommodation is sorted, but also take it further mm -hmm. and give emotional support. So mm -hmm. whatever emotional support is needed by this, uh, the recipient of, of that, mm -hmm. she, uh, she would make sure that they get that support and take it even further. So support them in yes. all fronts and make sure that when you get out of, um, of university, mm -hmm. and there's 25, 25 people who, um, since she started it, which is not so long ago, yeah. 25 people have actually gotten that wow. um, the grant and in that twin in within those 25 people mm. it was an all-rounder yeah so it wasn't just go to school come back and that's it and we don't know what happened to you yes. but let's see you progress exactly. let's see you go forward that she was so so passionate about and that's what sets her apart from everyone else this is it. now i know that there are funeral arrangements have they mm. been finalized they have not been finalized as yet, um, and we will obviously alert everybody once once the family has made those decisions. Okay. I mean, it's come as a real shock. Okay. Um, it's come as a total shock for the family. We are hoping to have a memorial service as well. Yes. Um, so once all those details have come through, we will then let well, everybody know. Thank you very much for coming in and talking to us about this phenomenal woman, Dr. Seka Mukwele, uh, the Nglovo family spokesperson.